on our uh, topic today, we have if else elements in our A to J DAT, our own internal A to J author document assembly tool. On the agenda, we'll talk about where to find the A to J DAT, a refresher on that. What are if else elements? What does it mean to um, include conditionally elements? How do we use them? Then I will go into a demo in the uh, author dev service in authordev.a2jauthor.org where the DAT lives right now. I'll talk about the DAT chapter of our authoring guide that will be released shortly, and then we'll have time for questions. A couple of important links to have and a refresher on where to find the DAT. We are currently in the process of community testing, so for those of you that have started using the DAT, you are the first uh, in the country that have uh, worked on it. We just yesterday completed a class at Chicago Kent College of Law where uh, law students worked in A to J author and used the DAT to automate documents for Illinois Legal Aid Online. So the DAT is in testing. It lives on our staging server right now, which is authordev.a2jauthor.org. If you have an account on our production site, which is www.a2jauthor.org, you need another account on authordev. So if you want an account and you haven't, uh, haven't yet uh, signed up and gotten one, feel free to email me. It's jessica at cali.org, and my email will be at the end on the last slide as well. Also on this page, beyond just a link to, to author dev, is instructions on how to access it from our production site. Instructions for those of you who are testing with LHI or converting existing A to J guided interviews, how to upload and convert them to author dev to test them against this new system. General A to J author community testing page for this period that we're doing community testing with Law Help Interactive. Known issues with A to J Author 6, that is jointly maintained. It's a spreadsheet that's jointly maintained by a, the A to J team and the LHI teams. Gives you some information about the bugs we know are out there, any workarounds we have, and kind of a timeline that we know about for fixing those bugs. I also created a testing tips and tricks page. Testing in a browser is a unique experience that is likely different than anything you've ever done um, before because you spend so much time in the browser making an A to J guided interview or a, a template in our DAT. We, we can see some issues with caching in your browser. So some of the, the tips and tricks are how to clear your cache if you're having problems with the software um, and things that I've found from testing with A to J. Then finally, I created an instruction sheet on how once you have converted your existing A to J4 guided interviews to our new version, how to upload and test them against your Hot Docs templates on Rebuild QA. And um, if you ever have questions about the upload process or converting or anything you have, feel free to email me as well. So let's talk about this if-else element and what, what are they and how do you use them. So authors, you guys, can conditionally insert elements into your template based on if-else logic. So you can in conditionally insert right now rich text, repeat loops, section breaks, and page breaks. We are working on the ability to conditionally insert if-else statements within if-else statements because uh, we see the need for it. But right now, rich text, repeat loops, section breaks, and page breaks can be conditionally inserted. To insert an if-else element, you select if-else from the Add Elements tab of the template design sidebar. So there's a lot of um, custom words there, or special to A to J words, and I'll go through it in the demo. Um, but the Add Element tab of the design, template design sidebar runs along the side of your template when you're in the DAT, and I'll show it to you. It's kind of your control panel for um, adding things to build your template. For those of you that did not attend last month's uh, introduction to the DAT or the October 27th soft launch um, of, the DAT, of the DAT, both of those are recorded and I'll be getting those up on our YouTube channel shortly, so that'll give you uh, more of the introductory stuff. This is the third training on the DAT now. So once you've added an element uh, to the template, you're able to add 
a variable upon which it can be conditionally inserted or not. Your if-else conditional can be based on a variable of any type. You can set the condition to be based on whether a true-false variable is true or false, whether a uh, text or number variable or multiple choice variable equals or does not equal a specific value, whether a variable is greater than or less than a value. If you select equals, doesn't equal, greater than, less than, you can add either a variable or a value to be evaluated against that initial variable. And then finally, you can select whether you want an else. Not every if else uh, conditional requires an else. You may just want to conditionally insert one chunk um, rather than having an else as well. And then if you do check the else box, an additional section will be added to your element that allows you to add rich text, section break, page break, or repeat loops to that else section. This is a little confusing in text, but you'll see what I mean in the demo shortly. To actually add an element to either the if or the else part, once you've added the if else element, you can select from the list of elements that pop up, which I've mentioned include rich text, a section break, a page break, or a repeat loop. And they work exactly the same way that they do outside of the conditional element as they do within. So you get the, the full rich text editor when you click rich text that you would see if you were just inserting a chunk of text into your template. Okay, so a lot of talking, a lot of explanation that you can uh, go back and refer to later. But let's actually go into A to J author. So I'm in author dev, I'm logged in, so author dev .org. Your home page will look similar to this. You click author six to access the A to J latest version. It opens up and looks like this. Let me zoom in a little bit. And then when you're getting started, you can start a blank interview or you can work on one of the ones that you already have. I've created a demo for today that um, I will also include, I can download this demo and uh, share it with anyone who is interested, and I will try to include a link to it on our YouTube channel as well so that you can access that. Here is an example of an if-else guided interview that I made that's going to collect a little bit of basic information. So from my end user, my uh, hypo when I was creating this example, was um, I'm filing for divorce and I need to, and the, the user, I'm helping the user file for divorce, and I'm going to need to find out if their spouse works. If their spouse does work, I need to find out what the job is that they have, who's their employer, and if they don't work, I need to find out if their spouse has other sources of income. And then I need to ask them if they have children, and if they have children, how many children do they have? So it's a simple example, but it'll walk you through some of the basics of the DAT. Before we go into the guided interview, I will show you the template that is actually going to generate a document. The template is found on the templates tab when you are within a guided interview. Within a guided interview, as a refresher, you can have multiple templates that can be conditionally inserted themselves. So if somebody has children, and if they have children, then they might need another document, and you could have that document assemble if a variable is set to true, like have children TF. Um, this is an example of a template that I made, just has some simple if-else statements built into it. So I'm going to ask if they have children. If they have children, I wanted to say the petitioner and the respondent have, and then however many children they tell me they have, minor children together else, so if they have children is false, I wanted to say the petitioner and the respondent do not have minor children together. If the spouse works, I want it to say the respondent maintains full-time employment at and then his place of work, his or her place of work, and then I also want to say the, response, the respondent is capable of paying child support. Otherwise, if he doesn't work, he or she doesn't work, I wanted to say the respondent is not employed, and then the respondent, uh, and this variable does, does not, is either going to say does have other sources of income or does not have other sources of income based on what the user tells me. That's it. Simple if else do, simple if else statements. I'll show you how to make these in a second, but we'll run through it 
in preview mode so you can see how it looks. Whenever I am previewing, I like to have my variables and script window open. This is unique to when you are in A to J Author. This is not available to the end user in the viewer, in the standalone viewer. But this lets you see what variables are being collected, and it gives you trace logic that tells you what's going on behind the scenes in A to J Author. But let's walk through it. So this is the introduction. If I enter my name, enter a gender in order to populate an avatar. And now at this point, it's asking if my former spouse is employed. So let's say he is employed. Where does he work? Corporation XYZ. Do you and your former spouse have children together? Yes, we have children. We have two children. And now we're at the end of the guided interview. At this point, if I was testing, I could either save my answer file over here on the top left, and it would download a local copy that I could save to my machine and use later. Otherwise, behind this button is the destination of Assemble Generate PDF. So if I click it, it will trigger A to J to generate the PDF, which it did, and it will download to my local machine. And I can open it up, and because I said I have children, it did the first of the two, the if statement rather than the else. It inserted two minor children. Because I said my spouse was employed, it uh, used the if that says respondent maintains employment at and then the corporation XYZ. So that's a simple example for you guys to see. If we go back and we look at the template. I added these elements by click, this is the template design sidebar that I mentioned. I have to zoom out a little so you can see it. Um, this is the template design sidebar. The template options, as I mentioned in last month's training, control the entire template itself, so including headers, footers, changing the font, changing the font size, changing how the numbering looks within the elements, and conditionally inserting the template. For example, I only want this to print if they have children, kind of thing. The font is sans serif by default, but you can change it. I usually change it to Times New Roman. Add Elements, the Add Elements tab of the Template Design sidebar, allows you to add things to your template. Every template starts blank, which I can show you. We just make a new one. Every template starts as a blank uh, canvas for you to work on, and you add elements to it. So I can add an element here. I just did that by clicking this if else button right here and I want to space it on have children TF. If you notice when I started typing A to J started populating a list of variables that match the characters that I've already typed in. That's a new feature in this version of A to J author so you don't have to remember the exact spelling of how, and exactly how you phrased a variable. If you remember that it was something like have kids, have children, you can start typing have and it'll populate all the variables that match those characters. This condition can be is based on a true false variable. I know that because I used the community uh, naming convention and included the two letter indicator here. So I know this is a true false variable. I want to insert this. When uh, this variable is true, I want everything that's in this chunk of text, this chunk to be inserted. I can have it be when this variable is false, when this variable equals something else, when it doesn't equal it, when it's greater than, less than, and you can have the equals, uh, doesn't equal, set to either strings. So if uh, cit city TE equals Chicago um, or does not equal Cook County, that kind of thing. You can also have it if number of kids equals two and have it be set or evaluated against a number. So it can be evaluated either against a string or um, a number. And I can include an else text or I can not include an else clause. If I include it, a second chunk pops up in my element where I can add uh, in additional elements to that as well. If you do add elements here, um, you need to delete them. Um, if you decide later on you don't want an else, if you add rich text here and you save it, 
Um, now you have a rich text element here. If you later decide you don't want an else statement, you need to delete the rich text um, and uncheck the else clause. Otherwise, whatever you put in the else will remain. Okay, so I have an else. I save it. Now I want to add an element to it. So if have children is true, I want to include some text that says I have kids. And then if it's false, I want to have some rich text that says I don't have kids. And you save and close it. And then every time you're finished with an element, you want to make sure that you save your template up here. So hit Save Template. And now I can simply test whether my if statement is going to be true or, or if it's going to print the if or the else. Um, I don't have an answer file to test right now, but if you uh, had an answer file that did have children, TF is true, you could test it. You can also test without an answer file. So if I test without an answer file, if have children, TF is going to be false. So it should print the I don't have kids part. So if we click get PDF, it downloads, I can open it, and it says I don't have kids. So because uh, the variable was not in the answer file because I didn't have an answer file. It was false. And so A to J dat assembles the second, the else clause. So the dat itself is uh, fairly simple to use. Next month, uh, or not, my next training, which will be in February, is going to be on repeat loops. But by then, uh, this should be live on our production site. And um, you should be ready to go and start testing it uh, and start using it. Um, yourselves, and we will get the uh, chapter of our authoring guide that details exactly how to do it, including screenshots, looks like this, um, with step-by-step -step instructions on how to work with the data, specifically here on the if-else conditionals. Those will, this will be posted shortly on a to jauthor.org in our authoring guide. Okay, so... Hi. Jessica, could I make a comment? Sure. Hi, folks. This is John Mayer. Um, the, the, I think the place where people will have it, it's it, will have the most trouble is is in is if you have a complicate. Let, let me restart. This works great for simple documents. Um, if you have two column tables with uh, multiple font changes and um, lots of little um, you know desktop publishing sort of elements. In other words, if you're coming from some if you have if you're trying to recreate a complexly formatted document it's 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 it, that that's where all the difficulty is going to be in the uh, document assembly part this is great for uh, letters pleadings uh, in other words not not complex formatting that that is easy to do in uh, in word but but not yet easy to do in um, in our web-based um, uh, document assembly system. That's an area where we know, you know, that we al we always knew we wanted to start with let's let's be able to do relatively simply formatted documents, and then let's uh, iterate on on that capability. But I, but I always want to do expectation management on that. If you come up with a if you say, well, I'm going to put a 1040 form in here, you know, that you're you're going to have a bad day because um, th that's a you know that's a a type of government document or court form that has, you know, lots of little boxes and uh, diff different, um, you know, left justifications, right justifications, and things like that. And uh, we just don't have the capability to do super complex things like that right now. Thanks. Just to clarify, I mentioned by uh, having the DAT on our production, uh, a to jauthor.org site, by our next training, which will be in February. Um, we, are, we will be working next year with the LHI team to get this up working on their server. It, it's not going to be live on LHI by February. I just wanted to clarify that a little bit. Those of you that are new to document assembly or are going to be start working on projects, we do have a training with LHI in January before the TIG conference. Um, that's why the next training is in February, because the uh, Monday and Tuesday before the TIG conference, uh, the second week in January, I will be in San Antonio with the LHI team and the Capstone team training you on all the fun that is Hot Docs and A to J Author. So if you are able to come, I highly recommend it, the two-day intensive training to dive deep into learning uh, both of our software tools. Any other questions? 
Otherwise, um, you can always refer to our YouTube channel where this video will be posted or any of the links that are in the handout in your GoToMeeting uh, control panel. Okay, I'm not seeing any, so thank you all for coming, and I hope you have a good uh, December. And we'll see you all again back here in February. There'll be a new GoToMeeting series for 2017 that I will post to the listservs in the end of January and also tweet out from our A to J author account as well. All right, thank you all. Have a good day. Bye-bye.